William Acklin gets demoted and the Sharks still lose. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team that Pierre Maguire is worried to death about. I'm J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now, and I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen, probably part of the Locked on Network. We cover your team every day, even when our Swedish son gets demoted, even when the Sharks lose their sixth straight game, and even when Pierre Maguire uh, is worried about the direction of the rebuild. Uh, so on today's episode, we're going to be discussing um, William Macklin's demotion. We're going to dig into the numbers as the Sharks play pretty solid against a good but uh, very off night Tampa Bay Lightning as they lose 4-1. to one. And then we will, uh, of course, address Pierre Maguire and his comments on the Sharks and why... Um, yeah, they're just wrong. So before we get into all that, do want to let you guys know today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right. Um, Sharks lose four to one. Of course, uh, six straight losses for the Sharks. Um, no help tonight, though, from Tam- uh, from Chicago as they also lose. Um, so we have a big game on Saturday night with uh, the Blackhawks and the Sharks um, playing on Saturday. But no help there as the Sharks continue to have a four-point cushion between themselves and Chicago for the race for the number one uh, draft, or at least race for number one in the tank standings, with the Sharks still having a game in hand. But uh, big news, of course, about this game was William Eklund's demotion. Um, Eklund, who's basically kind of since Hurdle got hurt, Hurdle and Kotor both got hurt, has been playing second line center and has struggled, right? I mean, you know, uh, whatever metric you want to look into it, you know, scoring's gone down. He hasn't been able to kind of elevate his line mates. Um, et cetera, et cetera. He's struggled, right? Face offs, whatever you want to point to. Um, so David Quinn put him on the fourth line with Ryan Carpenter and Jacob McDonald, uh, to maybe try to get the young forward going. And what does he do? He scores a goal <laughs> in the, uh, the first period, uh, the only goal for the Sharks. Um, so let's start w- w- with the m- demotion. It, it's fine, right? I like I'm fine with Eklund playing down. We saw him this happen earlier this year, right? Eklund played on the third line with Nico Sturm. Um, and if I recall correctly, he scored in that game too, playing against him and was quickly bumped back up into uh kind of back up to his second line. But um we saw Eklund tonight, I think, play a little bit more freer, granted a little bit less, a little, little bit lower competition on, on the fourth line, but Tampa's still a very good and very deep team. Um, and I thought Eklund played one of his best games we had seen from him in a while. And, you know, we, we've, we I was very hesitant about Eklund playing center, um, and he showed out really well to begin with. But now that we've gotten a bigger sample size, I still think Eklund should move back to wing once the Sharks have actual centers that they can play right now you have um of course you have mikhail granlin um you have luke cunning who's playing second line center um nico sturm is your third line center and ryan carpenter is your fourth line center and you're know, right like two of those guys probably shouldn't be in their roles um you know like i luke cunning god bless him um probably a, a better fit as a winger and ryan carpenter who's played well uh, this year, but again, was brought in to kind of be the AHL kind of leader and captain. And I, I don't know if he's going to be the captain, but right. He was supposed to kind of uh, lead that, that group down there and be a veteran and has had to play basically the entire season in the NHL uh, because of the shark center depth issues. So 
Um, I think though Eklund right now is better suited to play wing and especially with we'll talk about the rebuild as it's going right now and the future of the rebuild we'll talk about that more I think with better centers around having Eklund have that freedom to be more creative and I think his defensive game is solid and I think it will be good as he continues to get older um but again like just giving him that freedom and that creativity, I think. And even if you go back to like when Eklund was drafted, I know the Sharks announced him as a center and their, the, the original plan was to have him kind of do the Tomas hurdle thing of play wings for play wing for a couple of years. And once you kind of fill in your body, we'll slide you to center. A lot of people, smart people, you know, like Will Scouch and, you know, a lot of people we talked to are like, I don't know about him as center. I think he's a better suited as a winger. And I kind of, again, now that we've gotten a bit of a sample size and yes, this team has been awful and Eklund has been put up against tough competition every night, but it's not like Eklund's not going to be put up against co tough competition night in, night out. If he's playing a top six uh, role for the Sharks that we expect him to play as he continues to develop um, so I just think the, you know, I think we're going to see Eklund playing center for the rest of the season. Uh, we'll see what happens with the Sharks here going forward. Um, if they maybe keep this units together, or I assume Eklund will probably get moved back up here sooner rather than later. Um, but I, I thought Eklund played really well tonight, but I do think the Eklund at center, um, is probably not where, he is best utilized and it's nice to have him. If you need him to play center for a small stretch of games, that's a nice thing to have in your back pocket um, in case somebody gets hurt, et cetera, et cetera. We know we have seen plenty of people get hurt and the sharks it is nice to have that flexibility. But um, I think he, again, his style of game is best suited to play wing and allows him, I think to be the most creative and be his best best self and i thought we saw um a much freer eklund and then i thought he was able to kind of play more of his game i was really kind of tracking how he would be utilized uh tonight especially with you know playing fourth line minutes uh or playing on the fourth line how would his minutes kind of distribute um and it was a much lower minutes than we were used to seeing from from Eklund right Eklund um this season has averaged uh so this season he's averaged uh 1830 uh of time on ice in 67 games at least heading into this year or into the or, so, sorry excuse me 67 games uh, he's averaged that tonight he only played 1456 and we saw he was still utilized heavily on both the penalty kill and the power play and he actually was playing first line power play by the end of the game um but again you saw like luke cunning played more than him bailey played more barabanov zettelin bordalo sturm granlin of course like you knew granlin and sturm would probably play more um you know you know zettelin makes sense that he played more but we just didn't see Eklund play as much. Um, Carpenter and Koshin actually played the least amount, uh, and Zadina, excuse me, uh, played the least amount. And so we'll see. I would, I'm curious to see maybe if Eklund plays on the first line and you just have the, the Lund line between Zettelin, Granlin, and Eklund. And then your second line that you can, you know, maybe a Koshin, Cunning. Zadina line, something like that. We'll see kind of what what Quinn does here, maybe to try to mix things up and try to spark some offense that this uh, team desperately needs some offense. So maybe he just kind of loads up that top line. It's like you're my three best players. Um, just go, you guys, you guys go and try to do stuff and see if you guys can kind of generate offense that way. And um, and then whatever you get out of your your next lines, go from there. So. Um, but yeah, I think overall though, we'll see. We'll continue. We'll monitor the Eklund and see how he gets used going forward. I expect him again. I thought he played well tonight. Um, nothing to worry about, right? You're going if if we see Eklund playing two, three, four games on the fourth line, um, then we can have a conversation about it. But again, I think we've seen Quinn kind of do this with Eklund before. Hey, I'm going to sit you down here. Or I'm going to 
you know, I'm going to let you kind of play here. Um, try to maybe build your confidence up and then put you back up. And I think Eklund's mature enough to be able to handle that. And I think Quinn, I'm going to give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because it seems like he's, he kind of knows what buttons to push with Eklund and he's done a successful job with it so far this season. So uh, we'll get into the numbers of this game, kind of talk about um, how the Sharks were really dominant uh, <laughs> against this good lightning team who is definitely having an off night. Uh, we'll talk about that. Talk about the third period. Um, the Sharks give up another three goals in the third period to secure their sixth loss in a row. So we'll get to that here in just one second. No matter how the last game went, anytime you take the field, you got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. Uh, if you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Indeed's the only job site that you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that you can help uh, do it all. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring partner process Find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. With In Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates that, with resumes on Indeed that match your job description and can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. So join more than the 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer valid through March 31st. So go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. All right, uh, let's dig into the numbers of this game. And again, like the Sharks, this Lightning team had been like on an absolute tear coming into this game. And maybe that more they were due for a letdown um, playing against the worst team in the NHL. Um, right. You just beat Vegas. They just beat Vegas. Like they got. Um, the Kings on Saturday, you know, they have their, their sights set for bigger things. But um, here was the scores of the recent games at the Lightning. So they beat Philly 7-0, to zero, the Rangers 6-3, to three, the Panthers 5-3, to three, um, Vegas 5-3, to three, and then they beat the, the Sharks 4-1 to one tonight. But, I mean, those are, you know, the Flyers are a playoff team. The Rangers are a good team. Panthers and Vegas... Um, you know, Panthers are arguably one of the best teams in the NHL. Like this team has just been demolishing people recently, basically ever since the trade deadline. And the Sharks kind of were outplaying them for a good chunk of this game. Um, so 47-35 of 5v5. We had 50 uh the, sh the Sharks actually had 42 to 32 shot attempts in favor of them, 56 to 56.76 to 43.25 to four, excuse me, Corsi four. Um, actual shots was 20 to 15 at 5v5 in favor of the Sharks. Um, both teams only had 21 shots on goal um, each in this game. So um, very low kind of muddy hockey um, in this game. Uh, 23 to 18 scoring chances in favor of the Sharks. Uh, 7 to 10 high danger chances in favor of the Lightning. 1.67 to 1.65 expected goals for uh, in favor of the Sharks. And you can see how the Lightning kind of just were like, let's hang in there, hang in there, hang in there. In the third period, they were like, okay, let's, uh, we're done messing around with these guys. Because um, here's the expected goals for uh, by period. So the Sharks, so the first period was 0.63 to 0.3 in favor of the Sharks. Uh, 0.86 to 0.36 in favor of the Sharks in the second period. 0.99 to 0.18 uh, expected goals for in favor of the Lightning, and that's the Lightning scored three goals in the uh, the third period to to put this game away, um, mainly due to some defensive breakdowns. Um, 
I don't know how Anthony Duclair gets that wide open or Braden Point gets that wide open. Um, I would cover those guys, but again, I'm just an idiot. So uh, let's let's look at try to look at the the lines the best we can. Um, again, with Jacob McDonald playing as a forward, it screws up the lines a little bit on natural Satrick. So we'll do the best we can here. So um, we had. Zettling, Granlin, Caution play uh, was the first line. Um, Bear, Banoff, Cunnins, Adina was your second line. Bordelow, Sir, Bailey, and like I talked about, we uh, Eklund, McDonald, and uh, Carpenter was your third line. Um, the Bordelow, Sir, Bailey line played the most at 5v5. 78 shot attempts, 2 to 6 actual shots on goal. Um, 0.31 to 0.13 expected goals for um, in favor of that line. 4 to 2 scoring chances, 2 to 1 high danger chances, um, 1 9 0 zone starts. So I think that line has continued to play well. Um, they had some really, I think, especially in the second period, they had some really good um, zone opportunities. Um, Borla, I think, has been playing well. And I think we can start to maybe uh, put to bed some of those concerns that we've had about Borla. I think he's going to have a pretty good shot to make the team coming out of camp next year. If he continues to play the way he's playing right now, um, the bear ban off Cunnins, the Dino line played nine Oh three, 11 to four shot attempts, four to nothing, actual shots, 0.52 to 0.07 expected goals for uh, seven to two scoring chances, three to nothing, high danger chances um, with seven, one, zero stone start. So that line played really, really well tonight um with uh cunning centering that line so we'll see if they keep that line together uh zettling grandland caution played 846 eight to seven shot attempts four to four actual shots did give up a goal uh 0.15 to 0.63 expected goals four uh two to six scoring chances zero to four high danger chances uh with four three two zone starts um as for the other forwards so, um, Eklund went 9.28, 5v5 time, 11 to 5 shot attempts, 68.75%. Um, actual shots when Eklund was on the ice, 8 to 1, did have the goal. Um, very nice goal, very nice pass from Jacob McDonald. McDonald's like, I, I don't want to resign Jacob McDonald, but anyway, uh, he's been really good for the Sharks. Just, Kind of that utility guy. So uh, McDonald was uh, third on the team with Corsi four, 68.42%, 13 to six uh, shot attempts, 10, uh, 1031 time on ice, nine to one out shooting. One did have the assist um, as well. And then Ryan Carpenter, uh, 1119 time on ice, 11 to eight shot attempts, 57.89. Corsi four actual shots was eight to two. So that fourth line played really well. Uh, when they were on the ice together. So um, as for kind of running out of time here, so we'll, we'll uh, kind of skip the defender defenseman. We'll talk about Mackenzie Blackwood here really quick. So um, Blackwood, just something to keep an eye on, uh, was not available um, after the game for the media. Media requested him. He wasn't available. Uh, looks like he took a puck off the mask. Uh, it was being evaluated. David Quinn expects him to be fine um, per, I think, uh, Max Miller had it first. Um, but just something to keep an eye on, right, if, if something crops up here. Um, again, something to keep an eye on there. But um, Blackwood in his first game back in action, again, wasn't tested much with, again, like, you don't expect the Lightning to just kind of only Put up 21 shots on goal. Um, but Blackwood made 17 saves on 21 shots. Uh, four goals against, expected goals against in all situations was 2.57, 810 save percentage. Uh, three high danger saves on seven high danger shots. Seven for seven on mid danger and seven for seven on low danger. So um, that's that um, right, like. The Lightning were very much we're we, we're not getting a lot of shots on goal tonight, but we're going to make every one of them count. And like both the point, or I mean, the first goal was wonky because it it bounced off a the linesman scape. Not much you can do there for Mackenzie Blackwood. Um, 
Braden Point with the kind of left by himself. Anthony Duclair, who I'm sure has practiced that move on Mackenzie Blackwood in practice. Um, like, you can't just give uh, Anthony Duclair all that space. And then the last Braden Point goal with Kucherov, which is ridiculous. If you did not see that uh, assist by Kucherov, he is basically pinned in the corner with like Mario Ferrer on him. He's Kucherov's on his knee. He gets the pass out uh, to point and point just crushes it. Like it is a ridiculous, ridiculous uh, pass by Kucherov. Go check it out go find it on Twitter or wherever. Um, just, yeah. We've seen better games from Blackwood, but um, the, the health thing is we'll see how, again, see how it does, how the things happen here. So, um, yeah, we'll shut the book on this game. Uh, we'll talk about Pierre Maguire, why he's worried about the San Jose Sharks uh, rebuild here in just one minute. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset, go Oakland, or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right. Uh, Pierre Maguire is worried to death about these Sharks uh, rebuild. So on the sick podcast, the eye test, um, him and he was on there. That's his, uh, he's on there with, uh, Jimmy Murphy. Who's one of the, the main guys over at uh, the hockey. Now, um, I think he does the, the Boston, if I remember correctly, but, um, yes, he's the Boston guy. Um, you know, and they have a right. Um, and like, again, Pierre Maguire has forgotten more about hockey than I will ever know. Um, you know, a longtime analyst, he worked for the Sens for a little bit. Like he, you know, right. He's, he's, he's forgotten more about hockey than, than like I'll ever know about. Okay. Um, but he said, uh, this was on the two yesterday, Wednesday's episode, uh, the sharks, they're in trouble. Anybody that says they're believing in the rebuild in San Jose, their nose is growing by the second. He talks about how, you know, they're going to get pulverized if they bring out, you know, like any of the young players out of school. They rush any of the guys, stuff like that. Like, here's the my, my thoughts on it. Again, what did you expect for this rebuild? Like, you, I know the Sharks have been bad basically since like 2019, right? But you have to kind of separate, right, what the Sharks were doing. They're on two separate timelines. You had the Doug Wilson era, um, you know, and Doug Wilson was trying to get that one lot. You know, we know what happened in, in 2018, 2019. They get to the Western Conference Finals. Um Doug Wilson, you know, he wants, he's trying to one last run, one last run with the with this group of players. And you know, especially with the guy, right? You had Brent Burns locked up, you had Logan Latour locked up, you have Lassick locked up, you have Eric Carlson locked up, you have you know a bunch of guys locked up on you know long-term contracts. You're trying to maximize that. And I've and I know the sharks are in a terrible spot now, but again, what Doug Wilson was doing, like I get it. It makes sense. It made sense at the time. You're trying, trying until you basically can't anymore. Um, and that's that's where the penguins are going. Like, we're going to see this with the penguins soon, right? And if not right now, you keep trying until it's done, until it literally like kicks you in the face and says you can't anymore. Okay. I get it. I don't fault Doug Wilson for what he was trying to do. If the Sharks had won a cup in any of the time, we don't care, right? You point to the banner and say, cool, we got one, right? Um, just never worked out. That's for a different discussion that we've had on this podcast before. But anyway, so the Sharks rebuild really didn't come in and start until Mike Greer got here. And Mike Greer, I think, he, you know, he was very much like, we're going to try to do this the right way, right? I don't want to 
burn th- when remember in his introductory part, press conference i don't want to burn things down um goal scorched earth i want to try you know and he kind of gave them the sharks right last year right yes they traded brent burns okay brent burns make buddy you're 30 he was you know what 38 at the time like go win a cup we we know we're not going to win a cup but we want to kind of see what we have right you had a great year out of eric carlson hurdle and couture stayed healthy um you like you had terrible goaltending um and you finished fourth okay he realized that season this isn't gonna work we gotta we gotta burn this thing that right he ended up trading uh timo meyer that season traded eric carlson um and then he turns around and trades tomas hurdle this year like None of these guys are going to be part of your next great Sharks team. And, you know, he's brought in some veterans, guys, you know, like he's brought in your Ryan Carpenters, your McDonald's, you know, Mikhail Granlin, who was expected to kind of be, you know, was almost bought out by, by the Penguins before he was traded. Like, they've been brought in here to kind of keep the ship afloat. And I know this season has been awful and there's – you. Point, we'll spend plenty of time this offseason kind of pointing to what went wrong this year, right? Um, but, like, Mike Greer's doing the right thing. He knows the best. Again, we've talked about on this podcast before. The best way to build sustainable success. That is, We don't want to be, you know, a team like the Wild who you get in the playoffs every You sneak into the playoffs every year and you lose in the first round, right? You want to build sustainable success. We want to be see that next 15 years of great sharks teams the best way you do that is by drafting and developing um premier talent and the sharks have started to do that right i think william Eklund is the first piece um you have will smith who is you know will smith as a freshman nominated for the hobie baker award um and we're gonna have a conversation next week about what the sharks should do with will smith um to make sure little just spoiler right you have quit musty is going to be looks to be a monster um you know you have solid pieces and philip said and david estrom you've got potential diamonds in the rough and luca cagnoni uh eric polkamp and again like not all these guys are going to pan out you have a potential number one pick this year that you're might get in a franchise changing player in macklin celebrini like you're getting you're doing the right thing how what greer does next is going to be big right now that is you know can he get can he sign some guys kind of maybe come in here hold on continue to hold on the fort while you let your guys develop and that that's going to be big right but greer has i mean we we talked about the other day on on this very show Look at this Sharks cap situation now. It's so much better than it was. And yes, they're going to have dead money next year. Um, but, right, Logan Couture is your longest signed guy. And we're not even sure if he might even play anymore. Like, that could just be LTIR. Like, the Sharks cap situation is so much better right now than what it was when Mike Greer took over. And you can argue Mike Greer didn't get enough for his trades. And that is a very fair argument on especially a lot of them. But, like... A lot of these guys are looking way better than we expected. You know, look at like Shakir Mukumadulin. Shakir Mukumadulin, we were like, whatever. Mukumadulin looks like a dude, right? Like he looks like he's going to be a really, really good defenseman for the Sharks for years to come. Um, Quentin Musty, like I said, Fabian Zettelin looks like, or you know, Fabian Zettelin's having a career year this year on a very bad team, um, but like. That one looks like a dude for, for the Sharks going forward. Um, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about this rebuild. I, I think Mike Greer's done everything he can to put the Sharks in the best position um, to, again, sustainable success. That is what we're aiming for, sustainable success. Be that next great Sharks team for the next 10 to 15 years. Um, and I think they're they're heading in the right direction. This is going to be a big offseason for Mike Greer, right, uh, of getting the right guys in here who, again, can you hold down the fort for a little bit? Can we start to kind of play a little bit more winning hockey, um, start to develop some of these young guys? But, again, not be progress stoppers for when you're Will Smith's 
or your Eklunds or whoever, like not be progress stoppers here. So that's a that's a big ask for for Greer, but I think I'm 100. I believe I believe in what the Sharks are doing. It's the best way to build again sustainable success. So that's gonna be it for me today. We'll be back next week um like i said uh we'll have a recap of the blackhawks game maybe that might even come out saturday night we'll see uh we're gonna have a nice discussion on will smith and his future more draft profiles all that good stuff so make sure you guys are following wherever you get podcasts and of course you can watch on youtube as well you can follow the show wherever you, uh you get or sorry you can follow the show on twitter facebook and instagram at locked on sharks follow me on my uh twitter at my fry hole. Until next time, bye friends.